Howdy y'all, this is Red Wolf. I'm uh, out here, been working on a couple of projects. And uh, in doing so, I realized I had a little bit that I might share with you. I've uh, been trying to make me a ball-headed war club for a couple years now. And uh, I haven't been able to find any of the proper materials to make one out of. So uh, I said screw it and I went out here and I just cut me some stuff down and kind of made it happen. And uh, in doing so, I uh, was kind of at a crossroads because I could spend, you know, 20 years out here with my pocket knife trying to whittle that down. Or I could use some of these old school techniques that I'm used to and get it done in a couple hours. So, uh, I'm going to reposition the camera a little bit because I can't seem to get me and the work in frame. And then I'll uh, show you a little bit and hopefully uh, learn you a little something. Alright guys, let's see if I got as much of this in frame as I think I do. So first thing, I went and found me a good stump so that I could... Uh, have me a solid work surface for this which is why I'm out here standing on a slope a little bit and this is the log that I cut this little chunk out of because it had this uh, for what I'm doing it had this little knot section up here and it's about the right size and shape and I figure I can polish uh, the warhead out of it but um, what I'm doing takes advantage of both a saw uh, and a tomahawk that I brought with me and this is a technique that is originally called hewing, which is H-E-W-I-N-G, where you go through and you make several uh, cuts into the wood, and then you come back with your axe or your buoy or whatever, and you knock the chunks out. And you can see how much depth I got out of here real fast. And the advantage of this is it's easy and it's fast. Um, and originally this is done, I'm going to show y'all probably a little bit with it uh, toward the end to get a little bit more in the history. But you can do this entirely with the axe, scoring your notches and scoring notches and come back through and knock them out. But it's a lot easier to do when you uh, make your initial notches with the saw. So you can see a few of the little cuts that are left right here that I hadn't taken all the depth out but I, I don't want something this wide so what I'm about to do is turn it to the side here and uh, finish cutting it to depth long ways to get the handle at the height I want and if I I'm not entirely happy with where it's at. I can always come back and cut more notches into it later to knock out. So it's better to go a little too shallow than a little too heavy. I'm trying to get these lines on here fairly consistent. It's probably easier to see. Right here on this piece, these lines. I'm trying to keep them to a similar depth. And, uh, say and I'm trying to do these about two fingers apart because uh, I, I just I want that consistency on here once again rocking my saw. and I chose this stump because it's got a small lip right here I can push everything up against I've been keeping the log back here put weight on the far end since it's heavy enough to do that and it makes me a real solid cutting surface. I like it a lot better than some of the saw horses I've used.
Now, what I'm going for here is just going to be a smooth handle shape, a lot like my tomahawk. And I, uh, I'm going to do this all the way down because there's no reason to get fancy. Okay. So, just to be clear, fast forward a minute. That's all your marks in right here. I'm just going to set this right here solid in it. Come down here with my axe. And for this, I'm not going to get down here for these big power strokes. I want control and I want to make sure I don't clip off my finger. So somewhere up here in that top 6 to 10 inch, you can even choke up right here on the handle. Because what you do is just separating out these big chunks from the wood fibers. You're not really uh, having to worry about shaping right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take chunks off of one side. And then I'll come back and take them out of the uh, other angle when it's all done. But come back over here you can see I've still got some of my depth lines in here but you can see how well we cut this off right here some of these are already smoothed out and in the places right here where we've already gone to depth it's super smooth it's super clean it's 90% finished and because of the way I cut it um, I'm gonna come in here and this should give me some shaping on this side so I don't have to do as much overall work. You can see I'm just peeling. The corner out. And it's real simple. Anywhere that I see that I've still got marks. Is some place that I haven't cut. As deep as I need to. So you just keep trimming and you know if I'm also if I'm out here in a survival situation um, this is a great technique if you are trying to make jerky because you get all these big really good uh, like store-bought looking chips that you can slow feed into a fire and all that and that's a little side benefit here now because of the knot up here at the top I have to be really careful uh, to get all my shaping right but you can also because it's got the notches uh, you can occasionally even turn it over if it's safer to use because your uh, your notches act as stops so as long as you don't go up past your last notch that you cut, you know, and you got it cut to depth, you can really get this busted in here. You can see, like, talking about having it to depth. I got one part of this I didn't cut quite right. I'm going to uh, finish this up a little bit since you got an idea how this looks. Oh, before I forget. Um, well, I did put that right in my way, didn't I? Uh, you can also do this just as easily. And on some of these smaller bits where you're just trimming in, sometimes it's even better with your larger knife.
come in here. You got to remember to twist your wrist in a little bit to get that angle. But uh, once you do, you can just make these little polishing up cuts pretty easily. But uh, I think that's uh, probably enough looking at it like this. I right, guess uh, didn't want to waste any of my battery. Uh, doing what I already showed you how to do. So, let's see how thick this is up here. I've got it kind of roughed in here into a solid uh, square. I'm going to take it home. I'm going to do on this a little bit and decide if I want to uh, just bring all this meat down, make my handle all on the back, or if I want to shape it a little bit, or you know, put a big arc in it, do something artistic with it, or how I want to play it. But right now, this is heavy. This is solidly usable. You know, I've got a huge mallet I can work with right here. And uh, I got a bunch of shaping to do up here and all that. But that'll be a thing for another uh, ball headed war club video. Um, that's the basic technique. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. And, uh, Hope this that helps a few people. I would not call this a uh, novice technique because you need a little bit of skill with the axe to make it bite right to do it, and uh, also you got to be used to it enough to not clobber your fingers off. Um, this is some of the. This isn't exactly a novice skill, but it's somewhere in the amateur to expert scale up in there. Um, hope y'all find some interest in this hope this helps y'all out um just having a tool in the toolbox and y'all can see i got some of the lines still on here because i know y'all gonna eventually come down in the comments and complain about that and uh the fact of the matter is i just don't care i've got it roughed out enough that i can rough out my i can put my final design into it and uh, a native american would probably use something like a pumice stone and some sandpaper to finish shaping this I'm probably gonna go back to the house and get out my big rasp and uh, hit it but uh, I think I'm gonna give you all a quick little snippet on the uh, the down log I've been using for my anvil on uh, hewing and just a little bit of added uh, little bonus content I suppose my initial uh, plan to do this on the log uh, the whole time did not work out so I'm just going to have to ask y'all to bear with me for a second so what hewing is is where you take a saw or an axe and you make notches along the length of a log um, and then you come in with a broad or hewing axe you can see this is slightly off center here it's flat on one sided and what you do is you come back with this and you knock out those notches um, traditionally you'll use something like a big chalk line and make marks on how wide how much of a beam you want to cut out of this log and you use these as your depth gauges to mark down on it you get the log put it up roll it over um, which I'm not gonna do today it's more time than I got and uh, you get all these marks to depth and then you come back in with the hewing axe and you just knock it down and in you know 20 30 minutes you can have a 30 foot long 16 by 16 if you got a log big enough for it polished out and ready to go up in the uh in the house the barn whatever you're putting it in um it's really cool old technology it's a really heavy specialized tool I just happen to have one and um, I haven't had a whole lot of experience using it but um, I'm gonna show you a little bit before this log uh, disappears back into the woods with me
You can see why this is supposed to be up off the ground a little bit. Once again, my old spin saw comes through. Gets it done in the clutch. This is a very, very light axe for doing this with. Now, hewing axes are one-sided. You can probably see the bevel right here, which is why I'm on this side of the log so I can come down like this. If I was cutting on the other side, I'd have to come down like this and cut this way. Uh, nothing quite like embarrassing yourself on YouTube. Let's see, I think I get on this side, yeah. See how it just gets there and pops. Now, like I said, I'm not exactly great at this, but that ain't too bad. Really cool, uh, really cool tool. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Uh, if I haven't embarrassed myself enough, let me know down in the comments and I'll uh, try and make some more videos on this sometime soon. Uh, like I said, hope that helps. Uh, you got any comments or anything, uh, questions, let me know down in the comments. i um, be happy to talk to y'all about it. Until next time, this Rebel is signing off. <sighs> y'all keep up the good fight. I want to make a uh, whew, quick caveat here in case I uh, in case I decide to throw this in the video. Um, you hear me huffing and puffing, ain't because I'm out of shape. The humidity is about thick as soup out here right now. Oh, you start getting your blood up, and it's just hard to breathe. But uh, that's just another day in the swamp, ain't it?